It's tool time, so here we go. All right, welcome to tool time once again. And today, uh, I've been trying to diagnose a problem on uh, one of the cars, and I'm testing to see if it has a bad head gasket. So there could be multiple symptoms, but this is one thing that you can test that's really easy to use. Um, and you can get it for free at your auto parts store. Well, free more or less. Uh, so let's take a look. This is the, uh, the OEM uh, gas engine combustion leak tester, and it's part number 57145. And you can get this at Advance Auto, AutoZone, Pet Boys, almost any auto parts store is going to have this. Now, in order to use this, uh, quote, tool, uh, you're also going to need some of this, and this is the, the leak detector fluid. Uh, so, uh, let's take a look at what the tool actually looks like. So, I open up the case. There's not much to it. There's just this little tube, and inside the tube, there's a little, um, it's like a air dissipator uh, inside there. And that's really all there is to it. It's made of rubber. And then you get this little primer bulb right here. And that's about it. Uh, in order to utilize the tool, you'll take this fluid. And you can see the fluid is a blue color. And you take this fluid and you fill it up to that level right there. So um, uh, let's do that and take a look at um, what it looks like and how you use it. Now, uh, if you want to see the whole process of how you diagnose your head gasket, uh, if you suspect that you have a bad head gasket, watch my other video. I'm going to put a link to it. Um, and you can watch the video of how I did that. But this is just the tool time coverage, just to show you what these tools are uh, and a quick how over uh, to use the thing uh, so that you know whether or not you want to uh, go get one of these things. So this is the leak detector fluid. This is the whole tool right here, and we're going to fill it up. I'll let you see it in action. So the first thing we need to do is reduce the level of coolant. Now I could just open the drain valve, um, or I can take a primer bulb like this, a turkey baster basically. I'm just going to siphon some of this coolant out. So the reason we have to siphon some of this coolant out is so that the um, tester that we're going to put down in the radiator like this does not come in contact with the coolant. We don't want the coolant going up inside here because it will contaminate the test fluid. So now that we've got the coolant uh, drained below the filler neck, we're going to start the car up and let it run for a few minutes to get it a little bit warm. Um, that way we can check that the coolant isn't going to raise when we start the test. I'm going to explain this to you with the car off. But basically what we'll do is we'll take this fluid and we'll fill up the detector uh, to this level. And then we'll put it in here and we'll push down on it and hold it so it makes a good seal against the filler neck. Then we'll take this little bulb right here and this bulb has two sides we'll put the open side uh, into the cone just like this and then we'll slowly just squeeze this bulb we'll slowly just squeeze this bulb as we do the test and that'll draw bubbles up through the fluid to check for the gas uh, it should create a suctioning so that the bubbles start to flow up through the gas and then we'll run this test for about, uh, I don't know, two to four minutes, something like that, and watch the color of this fluid to see if it changes. So let's get the car started, uh, and then we'll start the test after it gets a little warm. If we have to, we'll take some more fluid out of there. Now we're just going to carefully put this in there. We're going to push down on it. Like this. And then, we're just going to squeeze it, slow, let some bubbles through. And we're just 
going to do this for a few minutes. Now what we're looking for is this blue fluid to stay blue. If it does not stay blue, then we have a problem. If it turns to a yellow, or an orange, or a green, then we sort of have a problem. If it stays blue, then we may be A-OK. -okay. Uh-oh, we're starting to get a change, but I think that we may have got antifreeze up in here because we're having a fluid. I think our car is warming up and we got some antifreeze in there. So, yep, our antifreeze level has risen, so it turned green, but that'll contaminate it. So we have to reduce the fluid level and try again. I think what happened is the thermostat opened up on us. And then the fluid raised. Now we're going to rinse that detector out with just plain distilled water before we continue. Now that detector, as I pump it, will cause suction in there. And it might have pulled the antifreeze out with the suction. Can't put it directly in your radiator, then you can try to put it in the overflow tank, but it may not be as successful. So I rinsed it out with uh, distilled water. Then we put just a splash of the fluid and rinsed it out again. Uh, now we're going to give another test. Uh, it was going pretty good for the first minute or so. I'm going to wait and see if any gas or vapor builds up in there. Try not to get the antifreeze contaminated inside here. Uh, for the minute or two that we were running it, there was no fluid change, no color change in the fluid. Right now you can see that the fluid is still blue, completely blue, which is good news. so good there's no pressure coming up through here is also a good thing a lot of times uh, if you have a large leak it'll pressurize your cooling system and there'll be bubbles flying up through this thing and that tells you almost right away there's gases entering the cooler uh, system Check my fluid level now that we've been in this. Uh, now we've been in this thing about two minutes. Cooling level still looks okay, so we're gonna run it a little bit more.
to go really slowly with the bulb. Our flood is still blue, so that's good news. Uh, now what we're going to do is I'm going to do a second test uh, where I actually just put the radiator cap back on, and I'm going to let the car get up to full temperature, and I'm going to try it one more time in the overflow tank. So I'm going to turn the air conditioner on. I'm going to rev the engine and get it kind of hot get it really hot to see if I can repl replicate uh, some of the problem that we had and then we'll try to run it one more time out of this overflow tank to see if it's building up any gas theoretically the cap here should not let it through to the overflow tank so the car has been running now for about 15 minutes uh, with the AC uh, max AC on high and you can see that it's not even getting close to hot. Now, I've got uh, the leak detector in the coolant overflow tank. Now here's the thing with this. If your car or truck has a pressurized overflow tank, which this one does not, you would run the test here in your overflow tank and not in the radiator. If that's the case, your radiator would probably not have a cap on it. You wouldn't be able to run it here like I did. Uh, so you'd run it over here and you'd run the test just like this in your overflow tank. But in this situation, I'm pretty much doing this for illustrative purposes. Um, and I was going to see if we could get it hot enough to get the fluid to come back out through like it did before. The only way that I'm going to get fluid or gas in this overflow tank is if this spring uh, inside or the if basically if there's a bad radiator cap is the only way that fluid should flow back over to this tank um, but I wanted to be ready just in case we get the car hot enough maybe this is a situation where it has to be extremely hot uh, under hard circumstances to detect a very minor leak did it have the gas force the coolant out so that's why I'm set up here like this now, uh, because if we get the car warm enough to replicate the problem, if it starts forcing antifreeze back out here under pressure, now this, this hose is tight because this system is pressurized. And if the pressure starts to force the antifreeze over here, I want to be ready. That way I can check it again and see if gas is coming out with that antifreeze. Uh, so far, so good. Everything we've checked has not led towards a blown head gasket. We checked the spark plugs. They were all dry. Uh, we checked the oil. It was good. Looked like engine oil. It wasn't milky. Uh, we checked the antifreeze, um, and there was no combustion gas in there. Doesn't explain why the antifreeze in this was a little bit discolored, unless the only thing I can think of on that is if there was some antifreeze in the coolant reservoir before some older antifreeze or possibly a little bit in this overflow hose right here that went there when this radiator cap opened up it pushed the old stuff down in there uh, and and discolored a little bit because the antifreeze that we got out of the radiator it looked bright yellow and nice As a matter of fact there it is uh, it looks pretty bright yellow and nice just like uh, we poured it out of the container Now we're just going to wait and see what happens. Um, we're going to see if we can force it up. It's been running for about 20 minutes now. And uh, we've got no nothing coming back out of here. The temperature is okay on the car. 
What we might have to do is take it for kind of a hard test drive to see if we can really get it hot. Um, now today the temperature is only about 82 degrees here. When this happened, it was about 94 degrees outside. So that might have had something to do with it also. I'd have to call this one uh, nothing wrong with the head gasket. My suspicion on this is one of two things. Either it was so hot that day, under extreme circumstances, the system built up a lot of pressure and the radiator cap did exactly what it was supposed to do and released the fluid into the uh, overflow tank. Uh, the other thing we could have done is that um, you know the thermostat maybe had been getting maybe could have been stuck for just a little bit and it's not doing that right now. On this one, uh, we verified what my findings are and we use this uh, gas engine combustion leak tester. And I got to tell you, I got this uh, from AutoZone on a loaner tool. So the way that works is you go and you pay for this and you use it and then you can take it back and get your money back. So if you need to try to find something out diagnosis wise, you can give that a shot. Um, and now you'll see how you use that, even though we had, um, I would say, negative results in the test. But overall, we got a positive outcome uh, on our project. So right now, all we can do is button this thing up, uh, fill the coolant to the proper level, and we're gonna drive the guy. So uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe to my videos and uh, ring the bell. I'll post something every time I'm trying to figure out a problem.